I have no idea what Pokemon Unite is anymore. The game has been bastardized by its dying player base so much that I'm completely lost. So we got our update to the Pokemon Unite win rate API showing the highest win rate builds. And after going over them, I I've, I've got nothing. Let's just let's just break down some of this stuff because like it's starting off good. I've been saying that Pursuit Sucker Punch is the best Absol move set and it's got a 52% win rate and any other combination is going to be well below the average because that's what's dragging Absol down. But even then, I still don't consider Absol to be that great of a Pokemon because it's non-existent in the late game. But at least you have something that could happen if you play this at like its highest, most mechanical, perfect level. So, okay, we get, we get a little bit of catharsis there. And it immediately goes away. Dive, Air Slash, Cramorant. Highest win rate Cramorant build. What is happening in these games how is the player base so bad that they just get punked on by this objectively terrible move set a majority of the time all you need to do is just look at the math and the interactions and the numbers surf is just straight up more damage first hit second hit level nine so like your night moves online things are happening even like before then or something where you're like trying to really scale like 1500 damage on surf that's a significant chunk when Pokemon run around four to five thousand hit points. Okay, pretty cool. Dive. You don't have to. You have to hit more than one dive. You have to hit more than two dives. And by the time you're on your third dive, you're like waiting for charges and cooldowns and stuff. And Surf is almost back up again. And even like on the increased damage, it's, it's whatever. So okay. Um, then we go into Hurricane. Like, uh, and another thing is, like, Surf is crowd control that's, like, a screen away. You pick someone with Surf, that's gonna be follow-up for the team. That's, like, a free Hurricane into it. it. It's just super good. Same thing with, like, picking Hurricane at level 4. The reason why, well, not the reason, but one of the big reasons why Air Slash sucks, on top of every other reason, is that at level 4, you get that, and then you can secure Bs. You can secure everything. You get to get crowd control for follow-up ganks. Hurricane scales you well beyond Air Slash, and it's just a better move. So it's not like, well, I'm picking Air Slash to maybe, you know, fall behind a little bit, but then come in. There's, like, no steal potential on the Air Slash. The Air Slash doesn't do anything. So we can see, like, the damage per blade. Cool, if you hit all four blades point blank, you get slightly more damage. But Hur Hurricane has crowd control. And the weird things like Air Slash Dive, the dream is like, oh man, you get in there on the dive and then like you Air Slash away from them and then you like comboed out. That's just less damage than picking someone across the, uh, across the screen with Surf Hurricane and then having insane crowd control behind it. And things like Air Slash doesn't even work to like peel or kite or give you any real survivability. Now if you Hurricane on yourself and then you knock up the carry, that's actually more escapability than Air Slash. And the healing is also not really that much like cool. 600 health. Like it is spammable or something. But like there's, there's just no threat from the opponent. They flash onto you. They could be a Sarina and just dash onto you a million times. They can be a Lucario and dash onto you a million times. Like there's... Air, air, do I need to do I need to play the clip? Seems like people have like completely forgotten how worthless this is. It's a very simple rule. Never ever go dive air slash cramorant. Oh my god. Now oh my god. I kinda did this for the audience retention, so yeah. yeah. Like look at that. We got a full health cramorant trying to catch up with the dive like the dive range is pitiful. The air slash doesn't really do anything. And What? What? That's why it's bad. Like, cool, you air slash me? And in the time, like, you're doing the cast time, you're backing up, and, like, you're trying to do all the other things, like, you provide, you are no threat. You don't mean anything to me, so I will just beat you up for free. Like, that's the reason why crowd control is such an important thing inside of MOBAs, or really any game. If you stun lock someone, or you just stun them, and there's no counterplay, cool. Dive Air Slash has immense amounts of counterplay. And this guy just goes into my whole score shield thing, where it's like, score shield is only used by terrible players to beat up on somehow worse players than that. Like, you have to let yourself get bullied or have no game sense for score shield to succeed. And then people just like let themselves get walked all over by it. I haven't lost to dive air slash cramorant because it's useless! The Pokemon does nothing! How do- how do- who's just gonna sit there and just be like, Yeah, you know what? I'm just not gonna let any buttons because I heard that dive air slash cramorant is scary, so I'm just gonna give it to him. I'm just gonna sit there and eat everything to the face, not even attempt to play around it at all, even though it's still just less damage than like cramorant comboing you from off the map. And then, 
Yeah, like, it doesn't do anything. It goes into a team fight and gets blown up because there's no sustain and no threat. It doesn't win duels because every dueling Pokemon has more... Like, just, just if you don't crowd control a duelist, they win. So, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's wrong. Same thing for this. It's like, how bad of a player do you have to be to lose to Stealth Rock's Fluffy Tail? Very bad. Like... The, the crustal isn't providing anything for the team, and even then, it's not even, like, that crazy when the Stealth Rocks gets rolling and all that stuff. Like, people just int into bad strategies, and it, it kind of blows my mind. It, it, it really baffles me. Also, I had the screen region different for the video. Um, yeah, and, like, we don't have the exact popularity, like, the popularity of this build compared to other builds and all that other performance, but what's happening? I also don't know like how the popularity skew messes with the numbers and what the overall effect of having, you know, the same champions that can be like against each other and ranked on different teams or something. I, because we don't have a draft pick, like I don't know what, what, what's being created from that. And then, like, okay, so the Absol one's cool. Like, yeah, I, I got that, but then I can't then I can't feel good about it because everything else is awful. Rapid Spin Hydro Pump. How is that the highest win rate? That's also awful. Like, that's, again, just a free win that has very little threat. The reason why you go Rapid Spin is so you have an unstoppable Water Spout, which is a tricky move to use anyways. But um, you want to go, like, Surf Hydro Pump, push them into your team or into a wall or something, and then, like, multiple enemy Pokemon are locked out of the game for multiple seconds. And there's no, like, they can't do anything about it. Like, you just set up the win. Potion. How is that highest, you know, like, what's happening? Potion Blissey? I guess I believe in that if you're not running the um, healing, but, like, Helping Hand Safeguard, 54% win rate. That I believe. Because... I was very surprised when I saw that Blissey had a 48% win rate, like sub, like str under, like well under 50% win rate. Like what's happening? How is that even possible? And then you like, you look at this like, okay, that makes more sense on the build win rate. Maybe the math is scuffed. Maybe the sample size isn't big enough. Maybe something is just wrong. Like, I, maybe, like that could be it. That could be it to where it's like the sample size of this might seem high, but maybe people are running full heal more when they're running this and then something weird is happening. Maybe there's a lot of air slash surf that's getting in the way. Maybe other, like, yeah, this is potion. Like, this is the off build. This doesn't mean it's, like, the most popular build. This just means it has, like, the highest win rate because maybe someone in a five stack is spamming it. Maybe something weird is happening that we can't really call out for because the API isn't as strong as, like, the League of Legends API. And again, the game's dying and the player base makes no sense and everyone sucks at the game. So, weird stuff is happening. Um, also, like, playing Blissey, to be a Blissey, a good Blissey main, you have to identify the enemy team. Like, if the enemy team has no crowd control, then Safeguard isn't going to do anything for you. But if you're picking, like, Safeguard in the right situations, that's going to increase your win rate. If you're bringing Soft Boiled into a Mamoswine team, that's going to decrease your, your win rate. Uh, Charizard, 56%? What? There's no build in the world that gives Charizard a 56% win rate. But apparently here we are with Fire Punch, Flare Blitz. You get in, you Unite Move. That's it. Maybe that's it. Like, you just lose the entire game and you unite at Zapdos and win. And use the X attack to just kind of secure the team fight. I don't know. Cinderace is a weird one. Powerball just seems to be very successful. Like, you Powerball into multiple people and that team fight's just over instantly because you're doing, like, a third of three people's health and then you're just two-shot kicking the rest of them with, like, your basic auto attacks. Faint's pretty strong. Eject button makes sense. Uh, Decidueye. Even its best win rate is 49%. That's sad. What a poor thing. Oh, man. Uh, Dragonite, Dragon Dance, Hyper Beam. Definitely the more popular win rate. I think Outrage has a lot more potential, and that, like, the Hyper Beam just kind of just drops off and doesn't do anything in fights. Uh, full Heal makes sense. Or, like, is also the Seppers. Like, Full Heal, the highest win rate item, but not the highest win rate build, or is this the entire build? Uh... Yeah, like, we need it to be, like, a um, OP.GG where, like, you can click on the Pokemon in this meta context and you can see every, like, different build combination in that win rate. I don't know, if, again, if the API is robust enough for that or if it's, like, even realistic to expect that at this point, but we'll see how that goes. And here's where you know something's wrong. Here's where you know something is very off. The highest build win rate, I think out of everything except for Machamp, we'll talk about that, 
Is Eldegoss with Cotton Spore? Absolutely not. I feel like the most ferocious of Verlisfy haters going, Ha ha, Verlisfy, you've been wrong all, all along about your main dive air slash always the best. I was right, you're wrong, Verlisfy sucks. They can't eat, they will not agree that Cotton Spore is the best on Eldegoss. Like, I've played it, it doesn't do anything. Like, the damage is nothing. The damage just gets eaten by another Eldegoss going for the, um, the other move. Cotton Guard. Like, there, just look at it. You, you're going negative into another Eldegoss, so how is the win rate positive when so many people are picking Eldegoss because it's one of the highest popularity, highest win rate Pokemon? It it doesn't make any sense. And I was even going like Kamikaze Eldegoss. Now, this does say that like Leaf Tornado is the most damage. Also, it is kind of weird where Leaf Tornado still like does more damage than Pollen Puff. Or, hi, Leaf Tornado, highest win rate. So like, yeah, you go in, you Leaf Tornado, you Cotton Spore, and then the idea is you nuke them. But I was like trying like tactical nuke where I throw a Pollen Puff on myself, which means I'm going to have some healing coming on the engage. I'm going to get the knock up. It's going to be cool. And then I just do no damage. I run in there and it's like, wow, they had like an innate shield. Maybe they had like um the goal sh shield or something or like something weird happened. And I do like a tenth of their health or like 15% of their health. And when con is supposed to be like the damage option, and the knockup is like a third of a second, which is nothing on crowd control. It, it it's worthless. It does nothing. Like I I look at this like nah. There's no like forbidden move set here where this is secretly super strong on the Elder Gods. Like Cotton Spore is trash. It's a worthless move that does not do anything for the game because it the it just doesn't work as an ability. And then like we go into Garchomp. The dragon move set has always been the best. That crowd control, the scoop, way too strong. Dig Earthquake doesn't really do anything. Somehow 53%, which makes me wonder what's, like that win rate disparity is terrifying to me. So it makes me wonder what, are, what other things are going on. And then like potion, no, potion sucks. You need that full heal. Like I'm thinking like maybe with current, like I, I do think there's some situations for potion, but like just splashing on the Garchomp sounds wrong. It's like, how does that, win you games or do anything but i guess since garchomp like lost a ridiculous amount of sustain on its passive or something i don't know the stats are wrong now garchomp doesn't like get into three people and then like out heal all of their damage anymore so i can see like the potion stacking the potion with the uh, focus band also technically if you use focus if you use potion before focus band procs it gives you a larger health pool for the focus band and then focus band heals more so you're going to be healing that like 20% of max hit points plus 160 and then you're going to be getting like 30% of that because of the focus band. Because like the, actually I think you just get all of the focus band value on it because it's proccing off that health and not your total health. So you're like yeah you're actually getting a, like a potion and a half almost on that focus band if you use it properly. So I mean like it makes sense. It just feels wrong, it's like, okay, but if you don't have full heal or X speed, you just get kited out and then you do nothing in a fight anyways. I don't know. Gardevoir, Moonblast, Future Sight, highest win rate, makes sense. And like, this is another thing where I'm like, okay, I thought Gardevoir was like a highly positive win rate Pokemon because it's been dominating even with the nerf, but especially after the rework and like people are still just super tearing it up on it. But I've been seeing a lot more, um psychic in my games i'm like okay that's just trash and also actually wait no future sight's the losing one i thought that for some reason i thought that, that was a uh, side shock i'm like yeah side shock moonblast that's like how you win on gardevoir future sight is the losing move set that is a trash throw that means it's a free win if it's the enemy gardevoir or a free loss if it's unfortunately on my team so i don't even know gengar sludge bomb hex highest win rate build and now the world makes sense again and then, like, Covet Greedent. Even though I think Greedent's a trash Pokemon, like, Re Covet Belch, that's still the best moveset. Um, Water Shuriken, Double Team, Greninja should not be the best anymore. No. You you go Surf, Smoke Screen, or sm Surf, Double Team, and, like, you're getting way more success on the Greedent. And here's how you can tell the entire system's fraudulent. Power Up Punch, Close Combat. That has never been the best moveset on Lucario. It's always been Extreme Speed for the resets, for the skill cap play. That could also be it, where it's, like... People are just bad. Like, I've seen Extreme Speed Lucario's com completely fail, but if you're actually p playing at, like, 90% of perfect on that ceiling, like, making sure you're getting multiple resets and, like, doing the absolute most work possible, like, you, you can't be stopped on Lucario. 
but this is the easier one, so I guess more people can win with it, even though it's just bad. I don't know. And then, like, Machamp comes in, and somehow, that disparity, 50% win rate Pokemon versus 59% on this build, Submission Cross Chop X Attack. I actually see it, and I'm like, I, I thought X Speed was the play on Machamp, but yeah, like, you need the X Attack, because Submission gives you enough steroids. I was trying out Dynamic Punch, because Dynamic Punch is more fun, but Dynamic Punch does suck. Like, you just need Submission. You run out there, you yoink them, and then you win the game. And if you go X Attack, Yoink, Cross Chop, Punch, Punch, Unite Move. Yeah, I, I guess that's how you 1v5. Like, you are now Old Garchomp. 59% win rate. Wow. Uh, I said win rate weird because I was holding back a burp. Um, Potion Mammoth Swan. See, like, that just seems wrong. Like, what? Game's weird. Um, Icicle Crash High Horsepower is the highest win rate. But again, I can't take credit for anything anymore. 56% on Confusion Barrier? Nah, Guard Swap's the play, but like, I guess it's a lot, of, like, I could imagine that the second most used would be Confusion Guard Swap, and that's bringing down the win rate. And I was hoping that there was some, like, cracked player with, like, a 65% Psychic win rate. But now nah, we got none of that. And, like, it goes back and forth. It's like, yay, we have the correct moveset. Yay, we have the correct moveset. Yay, we have the correct moveset. The world makes sense. Verla's file was right. Oh, Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil, the best win rate on Ninetales, like I've been saying all along. But then again, we just look at some of the other abominations. Like, what is happening in this game? I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, the mix of sample size, like, small player base of 90% garbage players just creates so many weird interactions in the game um scald amnesia x speed hey at least it's not potion build from reddit that's like number one win rate win rate god i can't say that word tonight i'm tired my brain is broken it's midnight cut me some slack 57 that's impossible like there is no way in any reality where slow bro can hold a 57 percent nah um, Electro Ball Volt Tackle makes sense. Electro Ball is the good one because that secure potential. Execute damage is really nice for like salvaging a scuffed Zapdos or Dreadnought or taking out a high priority target. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Pikachu. Yeah, there you go. That's the most balanced Pokemon in the game is Pikachu. You'd expect more from the mascot, but I feel it's poetic in its own way. Flailion Snorlax. Highest win rate. Nah. Hyper Voice, call mine. Highest win rate. Believe it. Fly. Yes. Fluffy Tail. Yes. Like, good. That's how you're supposed to play Talonflame. If you're going Brave Bird, you're throwing. If you're going Goal Getter, you're throwing. At least one thing is that there's no Goal Getter build that's number one right now, so that's cool. But again, I, I'm, I don't get to feel good about anything because the rest of it's broken. Uh, Grassy Glide, Triple Axel, Serena. Highest win rate, but the Pokemon's already, like, Giga Cracked. Giga Drain, Petal Dance. Highest win rate. Venusaur underperforming overall. Full heal. Makes sense. I thought it would have been X speed after the nerfs, but who even knows anymore? Wigglytuff, Dazzling Gleam, Sing. Wrong. And then we got Spark Discharge. Correct. And again, these, like, disparities are insane. Like, I don't, I don't even know, like, what you're supposed to do anymore. Are you supposed to take the Pokemon's, like, highest win rate build and see that as, like, the true performance of that Pokemon? I doubt it in a case like Machamp where it's a low popularity Pokemon on a really weird build because I've seen more dynamic punch being played. So it's like very low popularity on this build to where if you just have a main that's out there actually, like there's there's one good player inflating the entirety of Machamp to its true potential of a 60% win rate. I think. The game doesn't make sense anymore. And if it wasn't for this potion, and again, I don't know if it's like separate. It's like, is it this build exactly? Or is it this move set that has the win? No, I'd, I'd imagine it have to be this build exactly to get that specific win rate. It's like Icicle Crash High Horsepower. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm the one inflating that Mammoth Swine or something. Um, yeah, and then like Discharge, Fluffy Tail, Hyper Jungling, and then Giga Secure makes sense. Can't lose the game if you just like unite Zapdos with a fluffy tail and then just mash B while Discharge is pocket propping propping procking. Um I want to say popping, but yeah. Same with like fly, fluffy tail, brave bird. Like you take Zapdos and win. Every time if you're good. Uh yeah, the, these disparities where it's like, okay, so the reason why Zeraora looks like a bad Pokemon is because idiots are bringing Volt Switch, and if you're actually like spark discharge Zeraora and you have half a brain, oh wait, no, it's still an S-tier Pokemon. Despite the nerfs and despite Sarina's existence. 
and everything else is weird and doesn't make sense. I guess we need we need more robust information, we need better details, and we need a stronger community for this to make sense, but man, like, what a mess.